Hello, it's Scott Manley, exploring deep space in Elite Dangerous. I took a very long trip out of the bubble, right? The bubble is the few hundred light years around Earth which is heavily explored and inhabited by humans. But the entire galaxy in Elite Dangerous is, is modelled. And if you have a ship with a fuel scoop, you can go basically almost anywhere in the galaxy if you have enough patience. Over several weeks I headed out towards the edge of a galaxy to this little known system, Ceridia JXF C0. And, well, interestingly enough, I encountered a bit of a problem here. Normally you would just kind of slide your hyperspace, um, or slide your target over, go about a thousand light years and then ask it to plot a route. But, once you start getting out there, out towards the edge, the number of stars becomes small. And there is a gap, a sparse region between the outer tip of the spiral arm and the rest of the galaxy. And it is christened, being, has been christened, the Formidine Rift. Now if we look at the galaxy map, these are the bookmarks from my previous excursions. The place I'm going is on the left. And uh, there's another tool called Elite Dangerous Discovery, which basically maps, uh, it looks at your log files and it can reconstruct your routes and everything here. So this is me over a few weeks heading out towards this very sparse region of space. My ASP typically could jump about 45 to 50 light years, but once we got into the middle of the rift, we had to navigate a little more carefully. So the way I ended up doing this was just pointing the camera in the right direction and clicking through following the, the routes that were given to us. That would only work for about 160 light years and then you would have to replot it. But bit by bit I was able to slowly navigate across the rift. Now there are other people that have actually planned out routes across this for various jump ranges or you can go around if you have something that's not capable of making the big jumps. A lot of people have come out here for the specific reason that there has been a mystery brewing in this region. Now the first reference to the Formidine Rift actually comes in a piece of fan fiction related to the open source Ooh Light game, but uh, when the you know Elite Dangerous Kickstarter kicked off, so to speak, Drew Wagger apparently signed on to write a bunch of official Elite Dangerous novels, and in the book Elite Dangerous Reclamation, it is officially made part of the canon, and apparently it has been part of the game since its release. There's been something mysterious out there, and over time, secrets have been dropped, things have been discovered by um, the many, many explorers that have gone out there. Now, it's apparently also related to two other sparse regions, the Conflux and Hawkins Gap. There's actually an Elite Dangerous mapping project which has come up with names for all these different regions so that explorers can talk to themselves or talk to each other. Well, I mean, I guess they're in deep space. All they have to talk to is themselves. Elite Dangerous Explorers seem to really like coming up with cool names for things, especially when they find something that has emerged from the random number generator. Anyway, after an hour or so carefully navigating my path, finally I emerge through the other side of the gap and I can continue my navigation towards Cyridae JXF or GX-FCO. This is where the latest piece of the puzzle has been found, but uh, it couldn't possibly have been in since the start of the game, for the simple reason that it requires features that weren't added until 2.3. Now while 2.3 was called the Commanders, it was about multi-crew, it was about setting your portrait, your avatar, it also included some new places to visit. It included asteroid stations and it included megaships. And what we find in Saridii JX-FCO is a megaship called the Zurara. This is over 12,000 light years from Earth. What would a ship of this size be doing this far away? If you're just looking for empty planets, there are plenty much closer to the bubble. No, the Zurara came out here on some special mission. And while it does look to be somewhat alive, it is apparently very, very dead. Everything here that's running is supposedly just automated systems. Some megaships have uh, options to dock with them, but this one is 
Oh, it's kind of cool looking, I'm going to say. It has these nice gravity rings. You'd think, though, that they might uh, complete these gravity rings. Why do they have two gravity rings rotating the same way? I don't know. It's not as if it's to cancel out angular momentum. And then if they have two rotating the same direction, why do we have these half-completed things? Anyway, look, you get in close, you can scan ship log uplinks. When you scan them, they appear in your little uh, inbox here. The additional log. And you get some voiceover. wrong, but I think that's supposed to be the voice of Shalome, who's this uh, explorer character. There was a major in-game event surrounding this, which unfortunately didn't go quite as well as planned. It was infiltrated by some uh, griefers, in particular Commander Harry Potter came in and assassinated the uh, character in question. What's even funnier is that the event was supposed to be written into Drew's next book, but of course he can't use the character Harry Potter, can he? We managed to overpower the invaders, but not before they took out the main reactor. We're dead, in space, with 20 minutes of life support left. Didn't get nothing out of them before they died, but clearly it was all planned. They took a, a drug which killed them. Doc says it's named Hex Edit. First it kills your memories, then it kills you. <laughs> Neat and tidy. Something is coming. I don't know what it is, but it's bad and it's all been hidden. All this weird stuff far out in the void. It's some kind of contingency plan. The answer to why and Okay, there's no point in me playing all of these, you can find them elsewhere. I, after visiting the Zurara, started heading back, taking another route across the, uh, the Formidine Rift. I was heading for another region out here, which has some interesting features, let's say. In the Rift, the gap and the conflux, we've seen uh, unregistered comm beacons popping up. These things rather mis are kind of mysterious. They start transmitting cryptic messages. Not nearly as cryptic as the kind where we had audio encoded into a spectrogram. Now these are more things like uh, NATO alphabets, Morse code, other data like that. You can of course go online and find all these locations now. But uh, yeah, this one is in Airfots LZH B10 and there's like six stars in this star system here. But the one we're looking for is a little brown dwarf further out. B, it's the D component of the system. The beacons don't automatically appear on your discovery scanner. You actually have to get close to the planets, which means that a lot of the space out here has been pretty well explored by explorers <laughs> trying to look for it. Yeah, you get up close and if you're there at the right time, which um, I'm not sure the timings for all these. Somebody's of course figured it all out. But this is it, an unregistered comms beacon floating 8,000 light years from Earth, transmitting a, well, a mysterious signal every now and then. And that signal, well that signal actually gave people clues to look for something even cooler. Again, if you want the complete story, it's worth following the Canon Research thread. These, the Canon Research group do all of this stuff, and one of their recent community goals was actually to build them a giant science ship. Well, people have been asking to build space stations and stuff like that, so I guess if your group is big enough and powerful enough, you can get a station or a mega ship or something. You just can't, as a single player, convince the developers to let you point and click your way through building an epic space station. Anyway, following the clues from this, we head over to this little world, which is pretty much on the doorstep of, you know, just a couple of dozen light seconds away. And as I'm heading down towards the surface, a settlement becomes visible. 8,000 light years from Earth, I r remind you. 
Now this has actually been in the game before 2.3. I think this Kate was discovered nearer to Christmas. It is some sort of abandoned settlement related to the related to this whole mystery. So if I set myself down, I can actually get in and drive through the deserted streets of this space ghost town. I feel that I should be playing the specials on my SRV radio system. So yeah, I mean obviously they're ghost towns because there's no robots flying around. That's the usual way they signify signs of life in these settlements. But these are different design. They look like inflatable uh, resident inflatable habitats with not much else. But you do find these little uh, settlement comms uplinks, which you can of course scan with your data link scanner, and they will give you more information on this thing. So here we go. Formidine Rift Beta Mission, been traveling for weeks past this amazing twin nebula just recently, about the only interesting site on the way. We can't fix it, hyperdrive is dead, lucky we're in a system with a habitable world, we've sent a distress call but who knows if anyone will ever hear it. No. Well anyway, you can of course go and find all that information elsewhere, but I, I just really want to get back home to Earth. Because I hear that something interesting is going on there as well. I've got 8,000 light years to go, and it would be really nice if I could do some sightseeing on my way home. In my trusty ship, the Lucky's Leap. Registration code TK421. Maybe I can find that twin nebula he was talking about. Well, of course I can, it's kind of obvious. It's the heart and the soul nebula, which are pair of nebula, real world nebula that are out here, real world, real universe nebula. There are emission nebula with some hot young stars in there that's ionizing the gas and making things super bright and awesome. And I'm going to plot a course right into the heart of the soul nebula. It'll be a long journey, but I'm sure the view will be worth it. I'm using the, the midnight black skin, the Black Friday skin actually for my, uh, for my asp. It's a black asp! which kind of makes it hard to see sometimes against the blackness of space. Good thing we have plenty of nebula around, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it sometimes. Of course, uh, on the way I do make a point of trying to find any habitable world because they are worth quite a lot of cash when you scan them. And having exploration money really makes a huge difference. If you head back, uh, you can use exploration money to basically, well, first of all, get yourself money, but more importantly, you can get rank with almost any uh, any faction you like just by giving them about five to seven million credits worth of uh, exploration data and that way you can get allied very quickly if you say you want to get access to permit restricted systems. This is especially good if you've managed to upset some factions so they don't give you missions at all. You can just roll in there with a big fat stack of exploration data and suddenly they will be your friends as you share your space postcards with them. It's kind of the opposite of real life, where if you show your friends your holiday snaps too much, they will stop being your friends. But space holiday snaps include awesome Nebula. Now look at me there, that's my uh, character. I still need to adjust the face a little, trying to get it closer to myself. Orion's character is way crazier looking, I'm just trying to look like myself. But yeah, visited the heart of the soul Nebula, and from there, it was a straight drive home towards the bubble. Back to familiar places. But if you've been paying attention, there have been a few unfamiliar things going on in those familiar places. I did try to assemble a series of shots after each hyperspace jump, trying to get the same alignment to show how the galaxy changes slowly as you're flying through it. But it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it's there though. I should probably do another one of those at some point. But yes, hyperspace to Higwa Afa D90. Lucky's Leap is a great ship. It has been. Everything has been engineered to the best I can. I've stripped mass where possible. I've pimped out the drives. I've got an undersized engine, undersized shield, undersized basically everything, and mass reduced as much as I can. And. 
it looks pretty cool in deep space, if I do say so myself. Yes, there's a lot more to Elite than grinding credits. You can grind faction rep and uh, engineers and materials, and it's pretty much just all about getting an awesome ship. But that blue nebula there, that is the Pleiades. That is signaling that I am finally back home in familiar and yet unfamiliar territory. Obsidian Orbital, still there, but now more than ever the center of some serious goings on with regard to aliens. So yeah, remember the barnacles? Well, somebody started seeing some interesting new behavior. Turns out that if you're there at just the right time, you get some weird system malfunctions. We get frame shift anomaly warnings as something very big and strange shows up. Oh yes, it's one of those eight-sided mollusk shell-shaped things. Let's try and get an external view of this thing. Beautiful. Oh, wait a second. So it's coming in over the top of the barnacle there. And it's scanning. Oh! But you know what it's doing. The reason my third-person camera is moving is because it's sucking my space, my rover in towards it. Look, the rover's getting pulled in. Don't take me. I do not want to be probed. My space suit doesn't have ports for that kind of probing anyway. Oh, good, it didn't take me. Yeah, so people aren't quite sure what that is, but one would imagine it's some kind of um, refueling procedure, perhaps. After all, these things are full of special minerals and whatever. Yeah, the external camera does give you a better view of everything these days. For a long time, the third-person camera was disabled during the initial Thargoid encounters. Did I say Thargoid? Well, everyone's presuming it's a Thargoid by now. In part, because there was another thing which just turned up a couple of days ago. Yes, if you go to HIP 17044, the second planet, that is the start of a, a, a reference point to find something else that's related to this grand event. So you now have to plot course for the Pleiades, specifically for Asterope. Not Asterope, despite what everybody in the live stream was saying. No, Asterope, one of the daughters of Atlas and one of the seven sisters. Asterope is the place you need to fly towards. You need to fly about 12,000 uh, light seconds away from the second planet. And once you start getting close, slow down a little so you don't fly past because you're looking for a USS, or an unregistered comms beacon in this case. The reason I know this is because, of course, I watched the live stream, which was a harder experience than one might imagine, what with everybody mispronouncing Asteropi. But we get there. The skies take on a green hue. There's wreckage everywhere. Federation ships all over the place with fires burning and green smoke coming out of them. We have, is that a gunship or the... I, don't, I can never remember the difference between the gunship, the dropship and the assault ship. They're all kind of roughly the same boring shape. We have a Gondor fighter there. Again, I kind of like the paint job on that to be honest. It's a lot better than the real paint job. And over here we have a private data beacon attached to a very very big and very, very dead-looking spaceship. What could this tell us? Uh, we scanned it and it gave us unknown ship signature. So the story was that Professor Palin ran a community goal to get everyone to bring the unknown ship data to him. 
after it was completed very quickly before I could even get back. Apparently the feds came in and said, you can't have this, and they loaded all his data onto a spaceship, and then it disappeared, and this is what happened to it. And the only clues left are this data and this unregistered comms beacon here, which perhaps is a, a distress call? I don't know, you get close to these things and you never know what kind of message you're going to get. It appears that it only starts transmitting at half past the hour. Kind of. Delta. Alpha. Romeo. Golf. Oscar. India. Delta. Romeo. Echo. Tango. Uniform. Romeo. November. And the smart people there that know the phonetic alphabet knows that that spells out Thargoid Return. So the developers have confirmed that version 2.4 of Elite Dangerous is going to be called The Return and it's basically going to be a whole bunch of grand galactic storytelling uh, pretty much in the same way it's been before. So yeah, the Thargoids will be there and probably they will be things you can shoot at, but we'll find out more in the coming months. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.